Sandy Donuts and says, Good morning, Mr. Force. Time for your Swedish economy lecture. This is Sweden, a picturesque Scandinavian country famed for its beautiful people, flat packed furniture, PewDiePie, and meatball. Now, of course, if you hadn't guessed by the channel's title, we are only here to take a look at Sweden's economy, and it is a remarkable one at that. Sweden is home to one of the highest standards of living in the world, and it is often held in extremely high regard when it comes to workers' rights and even hobos get apartments. <laughs> General quality of life indicators such as working hours, happiness rates, and life expectancy. It is also a nation with a rich history of setting the trend for other economies to follow. Sweden is home to the Riksbank. Founded in 1668, it is the oldest central bank in the world, blazing the path really? for monetary policy that dictates every major economy in the world today. So, how did it get here? We have explored rich nations with strong welfare systems that seem to do everything right on the channel before. Most relatably, Norway, Sweden's little brother to the west. But Sweden is slightly different in the sense that it was not blessed with the Norwegian Sea and its abundance of oil and gas. So it was not able to build up a sovereign wealth fund with its oil profits like Norway was. And so on paper, its citizens are poorer than Norway's, but their quality of life seems exactly the same. Their life expectancy is the same, their rates of education are the same, even their median salaries between the two countries are the same, which is something I really want to focus on. This channel loves Norway and its economy, but Sweden is a fascinating case study in its own right, particularly because of these demographic figures that don't necessarily seem to make sense on paper. I don't know what the fuck is saying, talking about. A Gini coefficient is a measure used by economists to determine how uneven a society is. It is measured on a scale either between 0 and 1 or 0 and 100 depending on who you ask. For now, let's just say 0 and 1. Now the mass is all well and good, but probably of little interest to most of you. What you need to know is that a 0 on the Gini coefficient scale means that everybody earns exactly the same amount of money, meaning it is a perfectly even society. And a 1 on this scale would mean that one sole individual is making all of the income for an entire nation, meaning it is a perfectly uneven nation. Of course, all modern countries today exist somewhere between these two extremes. There are very unequal nations like South Africa with huge disparities between top earners and bottom income earners, and very equal nations like, well, Sweden, with an income genie figure of 0 0.27 as of 2018. This That's pretty good. Right, especially for a high income nation like Sweden, who boasts the third lowest income genie figure in the developed world, only falling behind <laughs> Iceland and Finland. This level of not only strong incomes, but even incomes, looks like a really positive thing on paper. And for the most part, it is. This income inequality means that even average workers in less marketable professions can maintain a comfortable standard of living. There is also not the same need for wealthy citizens to hide themselves away from the general population like they do in more unequal nations. This level of equality is something that most Swedes pride themselves on. Sure, a doctor is not going to take home nearly as much money as they would in the United States, but it does mean for people that would rather play with marbles and Lego all day that they have the ability to do so without becoming destitute and then go on to make a viral video and take home more money than a doctor ever would. Most Swedes Welcome see this as a do. decent Disgusting. arrangement. The doctor right. isn't going to make as much money, sure, but they also didn't need to go into hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of debt to get the- Why are people still comparing doctors though? I feel like there's a lot of tech jobs that Nowadays, pay a lot as well. Education they needed to the become doctors kind of old fashioned. This also I means like. that higher tiered professions like medicine are filled with people who are there because they are passionate about the fields that they work in, not because it was something that they could get to make a lot of money in. Meaning that the level of professional aptitude across workers in all fields tends to be higher. This also works in reverse. 
There are crucial industries like aged care, trades, hospitality, and even teaching that have been avoided by many in developing countries because they are not seen as prestigious, because they don't have the same potential for higher earnings. This isn't as much of a concern in Sweden, because incomes are relatively equal. And while yes, a doctor is still going to take home more money than a teacher at the end of the month, they will- Wait, why did he say we get a lot, they get a lot of debt? The doctors in Sweden don't get a, a lot of debt going to school because it's free, pretty much. Uh, obviously, it takes longer and therefore you have to get some student loans for longer. But the education in itself is free. Live fundamentally different lifestyles than they... Oh, he said they don't. He was talking about other countries. I wouldn't say the United States. This is great because it means that people can get educated and go into industries that they are passionate about and by extension are able to work more productively in. A lot of this whole arrangement is due to strong workers union and policies protecting workers rights and ensuring good incomes. But a lot of this is also because of taxation. Now this is not without its drawbacks. Part of the reason that income equality is so strong is because these incomes are considered after taxes. And in Sweden, taxes are steep. <laughs> the top marginal tax rate in Sweden is 56.9%, which is the world's well, highest you, marginal yeah. income tax rate as of 2019. But what makes this even more impactful is the income level that it applies to. In the United States, the top marginal tax rate is 37% which is already 20% lower than the top marginal tax rate for Sweden. Welcome but America's you, tax rate is levied on individuals earning over $510,000 a year, which is less than 1% of the population. In Sweden, you get hit with this top marginal tax rate as soon as you start earning more than one and a half times the average salary, which means far more people are paying far higher tax rates. A big takeaway from this is what we saw earlier, a neurosurgeon in Sweden can expect to earn the equivalent of, let's say, 200,000 US dollars and would take home around $110,000 of that annually in Sweden. Now, on the other end of the spectrum... This only applies, this only applies if you are employed. He doesn't really understand. This only applies if you are employed uh, and you have that salary. But usually people have their own companies if they earn a lot or they have a way around it where they get paid in in a in a in a different way uh through a company kind of so it's i don't know how many people earn a lot of money that actually pay 56 percent in taxes it must uh pro oh, probably politicians do that Probably politicians do that. A labourer might earn $70,000 a year for their work. Again, they maintain pretty high base incomes because of the workers' protections and the influence of union, but also because of the Welcome way that taxes are set up. That labourer is probably going to take home the equivalent of, let's say, $50,000 US dollars, which is, of course, a lot less than the neurosurgeon took home, but the disparity is significantly less, and a similar comparison would have been far more Welcome uneven in a country like the United States. So when you think of income inequality in Sweden, it is important to remember that it is Socialist a bit of a carrot and hole. stick. Sure, average- Socialist or shithole, pick one. Average workers are lifted up, but the absolute earning potential of high income earners is heavily regulated, pushing everybody surprisingly close together. Another side effect of- Germany is a third world country compared to Sweden. That says a lot. All of this is that the Swedish government, of, infrastructure. of course, receives a lot of revenue. And I mean a lot of tax revenue. As of 2017, the Swedish government received over 45% of its Depends annual on the GDP region. as tax revenue. Yeah. This Not is Berlin. more than double the rate of the United States. The, so the Swedish the government is, is incredibly close, flush with cash, which it in turn spends on things like a surprisingly strong military, running a safe budget surplus, and of course, rest. a strong no. welfare system. Things like education, medicine, housing, and even childcare are heavily subsidized in Sweden, which has its benefits and its drawbacks. 
drawbacks in the sense that many of Sweden's highest income earners are indirectly subsidizing the lifestyles of less productive members of society. But as a whole, it means that people are more educated, healthier, and most importantly, upwardly mobile. Now remember Marble Man, he is a great example of what Sweden really, really tries to encourage. Business owners. Sweden has a disproportionately high rate of business ownership as compared with other developed nations. According to Professor Richard Florida from Sweden. the University of Toronto, a world leading economist on this issue, Sweden is home to the most creative and entrepreneurial population on the planet. And it has to be asked, why? Sweden is very obviously a nation with a strong social structure and high taxation. How is this in any way a nation that encourages innovation and entrepreneurship? Well, there is the simple stuff. We saw that Sweden had a very strong education system, and that means individuals can learn about emerging fields and contribute. Or because of what I said, that the taxes aren't that bad. In fact, they're pretty fucking good when you have an actual stock company that you're doing your entrepreneurship with startup. Cutting edge Not when you're employed. ...into fields that they can then market for a profit. But according to Dr. Florida, there is a greater reason behind all of this, and it requires a bit of self-reflection. Most of you watching right now probably work a typical job as an employee. Now, think to yourself, what is stopping Welcome you from starting you your Canada. own business? Is it that business taxes in your country are too high? This is often a reason given by a lot of politicians as a reason to lower business tax rates. I mean, it's possible, but it's unlikely. If you had a million dollar idea, I doubt you would stop developing that because you realize that business taxes are 30% and not 15%. What might stop you though, is risk. For most people, the barrier to starting their own business is the risk associated with it. For a lot of people, it would mean quitting their jobs and foregoing stable income and health benefit, which is not a risk that they would be willing to take. In Sweden though, that doesn't matter so much because universal healthcare is available and even welfare recipients are afforded a relatively comfortable quality of life. What this means is that it is possible to risk starting a business that may not turn a profit. What this means is that it's a good risk, calculated risk to drop out of university to become a streamer. But for the first few years, because you will always have a good foundation to fall back on. If you want to start an architecture firm, you can. If you want to start a business that changes the way that we think about furniture, you can. If you want to grow your hair out and play around with plywood and marbles for two years, you can because you have the security to do so. On the flip side, in all of these instances, these businesses have been incredibly successful, which has led to a bit of a statistical phenomenon. As we have seen, Sweden has an income Gini coefficient of 0.27, which means it is an incredibly equal nation. But a curious point to note is that Sweden's wealth what does America have? is 0.853, which is incredibly, incredibly uneven. The Wait, second most uneven say? in the developed in the developed even. 0.8 is we have seen Sweden has an income Gini coefficient of 0.27 which means it is an incredibly equal nation. But a curious point to note is that Sweden's wealth Gini coefficient is 0 0.853, which is incredibly, incredibly uneven. The second most uneven in the developed world. On paper, this doesn't really work out. It is normally nations with high income inequality that have high wealth inequality, which makes sense. If you have a group of wealthy individuals earning and taking home an income far higher than the national average, it stands to reason that they would have the ability to save and invest a higher amount of money than the rest of the population, and by extension, build pools of wealth that are greater than the rest of the population, causing wealth inequality. This effect is magnified by the fact that wealth begets wealth. As you save and invest, your investments generate dividends that further increase your income and hence your ability to save and invest more and more money. This line of thinking, for the most part, actually holds true. Countries with higher income inequalities tend to have higher wealth inequality, and vice versa, but not in Sweden's case. 
Sweden? Well, Sweden, everybody earns the same, but there are still a lot of rich people. The propensity for Swedes to start businesses, well, that pays off. Income is taxed heavily, but capital gains like the appreciating value of a company are not. Now, because Sweden encourages entrepreneurship so heavily, there are business people that have been very successful internationally and bring a lot of this wealth back home. Apart from Switzerland and a select group of microstates, Sweden has the highest rate of billionaires per capita in the world, which means by extension that the apparent socialist paradise is actually one of the most unequal nations on earth. Well, we only have 9 million people, so it's kind of an unfair comparison. Not really super fair. Oh, 10 million, or whatever. Sweden is often considered amongst its Scandinavian peers. Per capita. One and the same yeah, but I know he said per capita, fair. but I said it's easier if your country has three many, people many times on this channel before, and one is a fucking billionaire. That while it is it a fair a fucking comparison to say that this is the, the country with the most billionaire per capita? To achieve them. Sweden for the most yeah, part seems like a similar You have to look at the underlying fucking technically it is population and a similarly prosperous economy. Technically it is achieved all but of these merits without relying It's kind of like whatever when you have growth. a very low Sweden amount of people. Is today a in my opinion. economy with some of the best living standards of any nation in the world. It ensures that people it's not a fair find work professions that they want I to work like. in and can excel at. Sweden guarantees that a relatively strong quality of life is maintained amongst all citizens and in so doing ensures that everybody truly has the potential to achieve their ambitions. Sweden is a nation with strong social policies, but still one of the most liberal markets in the world. Sweden encourages entrepreneurship and innovation, but doesn't punish failures. In Sweden, if you want to get rich, you can, but you don't have to risk poverty to achieve it. That's in me. Sweden, if you want to play around with marbles all day, you can, but you will have to pay for everyone else to do the same thing when you make it big on those YouTube bucks. In Sweden, if you want to dedicate your life to something that you are passionate about, you can, and you will know it will not cost you your lifestyle. Welcome Sweden may Uganda. very well be home to the world's greatest economy. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed the latest video. A huge thank you to our new patrons over on Patreon. Your support continues to make the- Sweden isn't so bad after all, huh? Looks pretty good to me. Land of opportunity. Band of JC, Astro Gore, Big Bob.